Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel or welcome back if you've been here before. My name is Liz and this is Let's Get Lizical where we do everything card making. And today we're doing my April submission for the Get Creeping on Halloween hashtag that Inky and Scrappy started. So I am participating this month. Last month I didn't have a video. I did do a card up on my Instagram, but I didn't have the time to do the video itself. So I'm trying to get back into doing those videos, even though I'm extremely busy at the moment. <laughs> Um, but today we're going to be doing a card with a bit of a clear panel in it. And what I did was I cut um, this doodle bug paper down to four by five and a quarter. And then I kind of temporarily taped it to the card base. And I'm using 110 pound cardstock from Michael's Recollections collection for the card base today. And then I'm just kind of like gauging how big I want it. So I cut one inch down from the top and then I cut a one and a half inch wide panel out of the card and I'm going to adhere the back side of this like ghosty printed paper on the inside of the card and it will kind of act like a barrier so you don't write your sentiment like above that area and I will glue a white panel below that um, but right now I'm just adhering the acetate I use double-sided tape for this because it's just a little bit quicker and I do cover it up on the inside. It's not necessary. Um, and I do redo this because the first time I did it was a hot mess. I did it with the um, 65 pound cardstock instead of the 110 because the first time I did it right here with the 110, it was really thick. And I was like, oh, I can just, you know, cover it up with a thin panel. But I wanted to actually cover that whole section at the back. Um, so you'll see me take that off soon. But first I'm going to glue on the pattern paper at the top here. And then my plan was also to glue the contrast panel on the inside before I added the acetate, which I also forgot. Um, so don't do exactly what I do for this video. This is how you're doing it, but you know, you get the gist of it. Um, so if I was going to do this again, I would um, cut the top and bottom the way I wanted it, glue the inside insert in, and then add the acetate. I was also thinking I could get away with doing the acetate between the card base and the top layer, but then I forgot that I cut it down so that there was a bit of an eighth inch border. So if you do that, you're going to see the acetate on that border. And then I was like, oh crap, I need to actually add this on the inside. And then I'll try to cover up. This is where I ripped it off. I tried to use powder and I was like, duh, let's use white powder on black cardstock and see how that goes when it sticks to stuff. Um, so I'll again use my 65 pound cardstock just to cover the inside. It also gives it a bit more stability because this panel is tending to like bow a bit because you have cut like the base of it. So if I was going to do this again, I would definitely do it properly the first time. But this card was a bit of a struggle for me today. I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it, but I was just like, wasn't doing the steps in the right order that I wanted to do them in. I think I was just trying to like rush through it and it caused me a little bit of problem, but not too much. Um, but yeah, so that's the contrast panel. And then I'm going to add this white panel at the bottom. I searched forever for a pencil. I don't know why I can't find a pencil in my craft room ever, but I ended up grabbing a pen just to like mark where the white panel should stop. And then I use my guillotine trimmer just to trim that off. And then you'll write the message here at the bottom. And I am going to do some stamping on this as well in like Lawn Fawn's jellyfish ink, just for a little bit of you know, extra on the inside of the card. I know Amy R does this a lot. She'll like kind of stencil on the inside of the card like really lightly. And I thought I would like give it a try and do light stamping. This way it just like adds a little bit of extra and you can still write over it. Um, but first you'll see me here and glue my inside panels. I just use liquid glue for this because I wasn't rushing for it to dry or anything. Um, sometimes I'll do double-sided tape. Sometimes I do liquid glue. It all depends on my mood. Today I did a little bit of both and I'm going to trim it just because this 110 pound cardstock for some reason is not a full eight and a half inches wide. It's like slightly smaller, uh, which is a little annoying, but it happens. Uh, so I just had to trim it down a little bit. And then here's where I'm going to get into the stamping. I do stamp one of the gravestones. I stamped the little 
like skull on the gravestone, which I should have probably cleaned off before I did that because I did see that it looked a little bit dirty, but I was like, nah, let's test it. Um, but you'll see here it's a bit darker and a different color than the rest, but I decided to just let it go anyway. And then I'm going to stamp a couple of the bats. This ink is extremely light. I probably should have done this in my Misty so I could double stamp it. I am going to try to line it up again, but um, so sorry, my head gets in the way. Uh, but it's a little difficult because it is very hard to see this ink. It's very, very light. It's really good for doing backgrounds. I was kind of, I posted a few of these on my Instagram recently for Father's Day cards where I did like whole backgrounds stamping with this jellyfish ink. And then you have one of them where you stamp with black and then color it in, um, which I might do in a future video. But um, yeah, so I like the technique. And then for this little cute little ghost, I stamped the outline in the Simon Says Stamp Slate ink instead of the black, just to like tone it down a little bit, make it match a little bit better to the background. The background, you, it's kind of hard to tell in the video, but it's a bunch of like little tiny outlined ghosts. And I think this is from Doodlebug's 2023 collection um, or 2022. I think 2022 maybe, because I think the 2023 was more like pastel -y colors along with like the black and oranges. For Halloween, I do have both, uh, but here I am. I'm just fussy cutting out the ghost. Originally, I had just like kind of did a quick around the bottom, but then I'm like, no, nah, I kind of want to cut around each one of those like little pointy bits at the bottom. So I did that, and then I'm gonna glue it just at the top and the bottom, like just like this is barely glued onto this card um, because I didn't want to add any glue onto the acetate because I didn't want to have to cut another one and back it. Uh, so I just decided to add that little bit of glue at the top and bottom. Um, originally I wanted this to say peekaboo, um, but the letters that I used from Mom Elephant's Whimsy Alphas are a little bit too large for that. For this particular card, it would probably take up like an entire card front. Maybe I'll do one a bit later, but yeah. So I'm noticing now that the B's a little bit spaced out further than the rest, but... Other than that, this turned out pretty well. I did two layers of black cardstock and then one layer of like a glitter black paper that I bought from scrapbook.com and it just gives it that little bit of extra glitter, which I love. Um, but that's it for today's card, guys. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. We're almost at 500, which means we're closer to a giveaway soon. But thanks again for joining me for today, guys, and until next time, bye!